Welcome to the Octave tutorial number 3, Loading, Saving and Using Data. In this video, we'll be looking at getting data into and out of Octave as well as using the data. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. There will also be two data files in the slides and code folder called single and double. Before we can load data in, we must first navigate to the directory that our data files are located. Octave supports both Windows and Unix commands for navigating through the, the working directories. We have cd for change directory and we have ls or dir to list the files in the current directory. We can also see where we currently are with the pwd command. So let's jump over to Octave and navigate to our files. Okay, so over in Octave, the current working directory is pwd, so we've got c octave 3.2.4 gcc and the bin folder. So that's not where my files are located. In fact, they're located in the E, e, uh, e drive and they're also in a folder called octdata. So I'm going to change my directory to E backslash octdata. So that's where I've stored my, my data files. So now that we've changed directory, we can PWD and now we're in E octdata. So the folder on the E drive called octdata. And if I type ls, we can see that we're on the E drive and we're in the directory octdata and we've got two files, double.dat and single.dat. So these are my two data files. And these are just a bunch of numbers uh, each separated on a line. Okay, so now that we've navigated to our data, we've, I've found my data. So let's start having a look at uh, loading that data in. Okay, Octave has inbuilt load and save functions that make it incredibly easy to get all of our important data into Octave and ready to go. Loading is as simple as using the function load and then the file name. Alternatively, you can call the function with brackets and give the file location as a string. Saving is just as easy by using the save function, then the file name to save it as a variable to, and then the variable to save out. Okay, so let's load our data into Octave. Remember, we need to have Octave set in the same directory as our data files. So, over here in Octave. So, I want to load uh, my single.dat. So, I type load single.dat. Yep, so dot .dat. And then this will load in our data. So, now I've got a variable called single which has all of my data in it. So it uses the file name to name the variable. So if I type single, we get a list of all of the data that I just loaded in. So as you can see, it's just some random numbers. Okay. So I can also load in data into a, into a variable of my choosing. So if I use m, I'm going to save my data into a variable called m. I'm going to make that equal to load and I'm going to use the brackets this time and specify the file. So load open quotes double dot dat close quotes. So I'm going to load the double dot dat file in this time. And now it will automatically print out what our M value is now. So as you can see, I've got two, I've got a matrix which is uh, two by uh, 20, uh, probably 50 different uh, lines. Okay, so we've loaded our data into this M variable now. So whenever I press M, it'll print out all of my data that I loaded into M. Now we can also save data out. So let's create a variable called V and we'll set it to equal a random rand and we'll do a, a five values in a column and only one row. Okay, so We've got this vector v now, so it's got five values in it. So let's save it out to our own file. So we use the save function. So save, and I want to call the file name my data. And we'll give it the extension dot dat. And then we want to save out the variable v. And that'll save it out. So now if I open up my uh, explorer, and I go to e, and I go to oct data, we see we have my data dot dat. So we've saved out our data into a list. Okay, cool.
Octave also supports temporary files, which can be very useful when dealing with very large quantities of data or when another program may need to access the data while Octave is still running. The temp files created by Octave will be automatically deleted once Octave closes. We call the temp file function. Octave saves a file handle that we can use to save and load from. Okay, so let's jump over to Octave and we'll create a temporary file. So let's call our temporary file f. So that's going to be a file handle. So f equals tmp file. So it's we can see that uh, f equals 3. So f is a file handle with the value 3. Now we can use f to save to. So let's save our, our random vector v to our file handle. So save to f. So instead of a file name, we just use f. And we want to save v to into f. And that will save our data. Now let's set v to equal an empty vector. So v now equals 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load back in from our temp file. So load f. Now, when we load f, if we type v again, we notice we've got all of our values back. Now, Octave stores what the variable name was when it's saved out to a file. So that way when you load the value in, it will load it back into the original variable name. Okay, so let's jump back to the slideshow. So, now that our data is loaded in, we may need to move the data around before working with the data. We can join two matrices or two vectors together, providing they have the appropriate dimensions for merging. Let's have a look at the example shown here. Moving around the, the vectors A and B, then we'll merge our data uh, that we lo uh, loaded in. So A equals 1 uh, semicolon 2 semicolon 3 and b equals 4 semicolon 5 semicolon 6 and what we're going to do is we're going to merge them uh, in like on top of each other so concatenate um, then we can use our c variable and we'll store uh, a and b placed next to each other so in uh, a column matrix so we'll come back over to octave so it's a bit easier to visualize and we'll just clear the screen Okay, so A equals, open square bracket, 1 colon 2 colon 3. So we've got our column vector A, and then we'll create B, which is equal, open square bracket, 4 colon 5 colon 6. And we got our two different uh, vectors. So let's just see what it looks like when we concatenate the two together. So A, semicolon, so we're going to go down to the next row, B. Now when we do this, we get them concatenate, concatenated onto the end of each other. So we've gone down a row from the end of A, and we've placed B on the end. Okay, so we can also set uh, a variable to be the result. So we'll get set C to equal, open square brackets, A space B, close square brackets. Now as you can see, it's become a matrix, and they've been put next to each other. So we've joined, we've merged the two together. Okay. There is two very useful utility functions for determining the size or length of a matrix or vector. There are, these are size and length. Size will return a vector with the dimensions of the matrix or vector, whereas length will return a scalar value of the length of the vector or the longest dimension of the matrix. So let's have a quick look and see how, how, how it works. So we'll use our C variable that we just created. So if we do size of C, we get back a matrix, a uh, two by one matrix. So we get three and two. So that's the, uh, it's got three rows and two columns. Now we can also use length. So if we do length and we do length of C, we'll get back three, because that's the length of the longest side of the matrix. Now if we also use length on a vector, so A, which was our one, two, three, if you remember, we'll get, whoop, that's G. 
we also get three as that's and we just we get just three which is the length of a okay so we'll clear the screen Uh, Octave supports quite a few data formats for loading in. Octave can load and save MATLAB data files, as well as CSV files, so comma separated values, and tabulated slash white space separated data. Finally, a few extras. It's important to note that when you use the save function and you do not specify a variable to save, Octave will save all of the user created variables in the Octave session to that file. If you want to save out data to a text file, you can use the dash ASCII option. There is other save options like binary and MATLAB versions, which you can find in the Octave docs. Lastly, if you have set a folder for all of your data files, you can use the add path function to specify a path for Octave to search for files and functions in. This concludes our look at loading, saving and using data in Octave. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Next, we're going to look at plotting data in Octave. Thanks for watching.